This episode of John Locker and Viewed Your Profile is brought to you by NEJM Group, more vital than ever. This is John Locker and Viewed Your Profile. This episode's guest is President at Biopharma Media Services and past AMM President, Lisa Healy. All my exes live in Texas. Well, that's not true. Most of them live in Pennsylvania, where it's actually sunny. It's March and the weather is getting nicer. People are getting vaccinated. March Madness is coming. There's just a lot of good stuff on the horizon. One of those good things on the horizon is the upcoming AMM Nexus Awards, which I'll talk with my guest about today. Somehow I've landed on the committee for this event, and I'm still not sure if I'm helpful at all, but I'm trying. I can at least plug that the event will be June 15th, 2021. Got to stay tuned to hear more about it. So most of the snow from this brutal winter is now gone. And with temperatures rising, it's been nice to see the outside world a little bit. I'm actually having lunch with someone this Friday, which might be the most exciting thing I've done in months. Praying that we return to a normal situation where I can get back to taking simple lunches for granted, not circling them on my calendar in big red smiley faces. Thinking warm thoughts, I was just looking back through pictures of my family's trip to Disney, which feels like it was forever ago. I saw this cute one in front of the Magic Kingdom and couldn't put my finger on why it looked like a familiar pose. Then it hit me. We're basically the Daniel Tiger family, except with pants. So my guest this episode now lives in Texas, which from my limited geographical knowledge I'd think would be warm, but I know they've had a rough winter as well. Hopefully it's getting nicer there too, and we'll find out more from... Lisa Healy is president at Biopharma Media Services, is past president of the AMM, and is still highly active with the association. Welcome, Lisa. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be doing this with you. I awesome. love watching them, so I'm a big fan. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, so let's give the other fans some exciting things to talk about. Um, we are both on the committee for the AMM Nexus Awards, and that's being planned for something, some date in the future. Um, yeah. What do we currently know about this year's event? Well, we know that it is um, still an unprecedented year. Um, and um, instead of trying to plan for a live event like we did last year and having to push, 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 and then things getting all mashed together, we decided to make it virtual. So it will be in June and we will be awarding our 2020 Nexus Award winner. Um, but the voting will be going out very soon. Um, and we're really excited about the voting. Um, thank you so much for your help because wow. we really wanted to highlight this year um, when you're picking the winner, when you're thinking about it, like what did people do in this crazy year of COVID to really stand out? Um, so we'd like all the media folks to really think about that. And we even added a new category for consideration, which is creativity. So like, how did you cope with the Zoom fatigue? And how did you make those connections that you would normally make in person in this virtual world? So we're really hoping that the media folks kind of hunker down and really think about it when they're voting. Nice, nice. So we have an official date for this, right? Is it going to be June yes. 15th, I believe? June 15th, and it will be virtual, but I think it's going to be such a worthwhile virtual event. It's going to be very different than our educational sessions that we've done virtually. We're hoping to have some entertainment and really bring an exciting event um, that the person that is honored with the award really feels. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the AMM to do a better job than they did with the uh, Battle of the Brains for Breast Cancer Entertainment because that was just pretty. That was pretty good. It's pretty half-assed, I think. But raise the bar. We have <laughs> yeah. a lot to live up to. Yeah, well, hopefully we have enough time to come up with uh, something better than that, and I'm sure it's. Uh, it's doable. Um, so speaking of the voting, when abouts does that start and when will that be sent out? 
So we're just finalizing um, the ballot now um, and making sure that we have everyone's contact information to get it out. We're going to do a video also to get people's attention on kind of what to think about when voting instead of just sending an open letter um, okay. to, to those who will be voting. So I would say in the next couple of weeks to keep an eye out in your email inbox and the ballot should be there. Very cool, very cool. And people can nominate two different reps, right? So me and another rep of their choice? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect, perfect. Doesn't have to be me, but you know, if they wanna nominate me, I would. I hey, would you never know. You never know, <laughs> you never know. Um, cool, so I mentioned in the, in the intro, um, you know, you're, not only heavily involved with AMM, still your past president, um, and you still do a lot. Um, how was your experience as president? Um, and what do you still what are you still involved with today outside of you know being on these committees? Um, how are you still involved with AMM? So, um, I, gosh, I would say I've been pres I've been part of AMM for over ten years, and oh. Art will check brought in a couple of media folks all those years ago. And uh, he invited me to be on the board. And it was really a great experience um, because it gave me a perspective. Like I had somewhat of a perspective about the publishers and um, what they experienced in our world and our industry because I started out in sales uh, and then went into media, which is kind of the opposite of what most people do. Um, so I had an appreciation for what the sales reps do, but not really understanding kind of the bigger picture from a publisher's perspective. And that's across all media. When I say publisher, I mean site, whatever the property may be. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it gave me the opportunity to understand their position. Um, and then also was able to bring like the media's side of this, this situation. Um, and how could we really work together to build our industry and our business? Because we all have the same kind of stake in the game. Um, and then Art Wilczek, um two years ago recommended um, me as president. So I was the first media person to hold the office of president for wow. AMM. And it was really humbling uh, time. And I was very lucky because it was pre-COVID. Poor <laughs> Hank Blaney after me. And now this year, Eileen Henry, they've had their hands full um, running the organization, but all the members are great because um, they've really been supportive of the industry. And I, I really feel like we're both have the same vested interests um, with AMM. Um, and I, I feel I was trying to be very aspirational when I was president. Um, I think we did some great things and we had a great year. Um, I still work hard to try to make it even more valuable for the media folks. I always try to put that lens on, like what value can a media person get from an educational session? So that's where I'm sharing and spending my efforts now, post-president time. Um, I'm uh, the chair of the education committee and I have a great team there. They're, they're fantastic and it's pretty much 50-50 publishers and media folks um, creating the content for our educational sessions this year. Awesome, awesome. And they're great. And there is a ton of value that everybody gets out of those. So thank you for all the hard work that you do. Um, you've been super busy over the last couple of years, uh, not only being president of AMM, uh, I'll get to it in a second, the starting of your own company. Uh, but I don't know if, if all the viewers know you've gone through a big move recently, um, moving from East Coast to Texas. How's that transition been for you? I, yes, it was a big move. Um, we drove from New York to Texas at the end of October 
five pets, my daughter, and enough stuff to get us um, to our permanent home because we rented an apartment until our house was finished. Um, that was really exciting doing the drive. Um, it was quite an adventure. Um, I have to say the transition's been pretty easy. People are very, very nice in Texas. My daughter finally has friends. I think that was the most stressful part of the whole move because she had only ever lived in Somers her whole life and she had quite the group of friends um, and a big life there. Um, so once she got friends here, I think it became a lot smoother. Uh, there have been a couple of bumps, especially the weather yeah. <laughs> and the big weather we had, but I really feel like Maeve and I are getting into a really good groove now that we're here and we're in our permanent home. Nice. What kind of car do you have that you were able to drive with five pets and your whole family and everything? Yeah, um, it's a, a Porsche Macan, so it's a small SUV. Oh, um, very yeah. Nice. So it was it was jam packed. I mean, the the dogs were sitting on all the bedding. Um, and they were like way up high in the back seat and uh, the cats were in a crate. So nice, nice. it was it was an adventure and everyone did great. The best part of the trip, I think the coolest part of the trip for me, I would have to say, was crossing from the eastern time zone into central uh -huh. and the clock on the car automatically went back an hour. Oh, I mean, wow. and there'll be, a, there was a sign saying you're, you're driving into the central time zone. And that was really cool to see. That is cool. That is cool. My, my car doesn't automatically adjust. So six months of the year, I'm in the wrong time because I don't know how to change it. So, <laughs> yeah. and that's coming up. That's coming up. I think uh, this, this weekend is daylight savings, sure. change the clocks. <laughs> So, so that'll be nice. I'm looking forward to the longer days of yeah. sun and uh, hopefully get rid of some of that like winter gloom. Um, how long of a car ride was that? It's about 22 hours. Oh. So we did it in three days. We'd stayed two nights. So we stayed in Virginia and then we stayed in um, Tennessee. Nice. And then we made it to Texas. Wow, and you stay, what, what did you stay at, like a hotel? Uh, yeah, we stayed at a hotel, pet-friendly Very pet-friendly. And yeah, we pretty That's much awesome. hauled in the early part of the day so that yeah. we could just relax from like three in the afternoon and go to bed early and get up at like five in the morning and in the car and go. Wow. And we drove about seven hours a day. Holy heck, that's a, <laughs> that's a trip. That sounds awesome. Um, so speaking of other big transitions, uh, you know, obviously looking at your profile and knowing you for years, I know you've worked at various agencies and, uh, when did you, when did you start Biopharma Media Services? So, um, it, I've had Biopharma Media Services for about a year and a half now. Okay. And, um, I love it. I love having my own business um, and being being able to make the decisions. Yeah. Um, and I love the clients I get to work with because when I was at SSCJ Media and I loved it, had the best experience there, me worked with some incredible people. I always tended tended to work with the clients who are on the smaller side. Or who, or the managed care accounts, you know. Right. So it was always a little bit more niche the stuff that I was working on. But and it was hard for them to work with a big agency because the budgets were on the smaller side. So I felt there was kind of like a gap in the industry, and that's why I started the business so that I could work with those smaller clients who didn't have the bigger budgets that you know, and, and didn't require all the different layers um, to do their, their media, so. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so that's, anybody that's listening it. here that needs a specialized agency, uh, yes. give Lisa Healy a call. Um, 
I actually, you know, this kind of segue is, you know, running, running your own company, all this, you have a very impressive uh, educational background. You, I saw something on your profile that I don't see on many uh, profiles that I take a look at. Not only do you have a communications degree, but did you go to law school? I did. I went to St. John's Law School in Queens, New York. Nice. Um, I actually went to law school because I really didn't know what I was going to do with my communications degree. Um, all those I, st I still don't ago, know what I'm doing yes. with mine. <laughs> all those years ago, they really not, were not paying a lot of money. Um, so my dad had suggested, why don't you go to law school? And I negotiated with him. Okay, if I, you know, that will be my job and you have to pay for everything. And because I, I um, St. John's fortunately was very affordable at that time. So um, I went to law school uh, and it was great. Um, however, when I graduated law school, there was a complete utter gut into the industry of lawyers and there were very few jobs. And the job I ended up getting was a residential uh, real estate attorney. I represented lenders and it was the early nineties. So it was the refinancing boom okay. and it was torture. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was a lot of paperwork. Um, I do a mean closing, uh, but uh, I just, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Um, and then I saw a help wanted ad in the New York Times that said careers for women and they were looking for female attorneys. And it actually was a, a job, a recruitment company, and they were looking for salespeople and they just felt women attorneys um, were going to be great salespeople. And then I went out selling for a local newspaper in Manhattan. And I met Michelle Jannon because her husband was running a dry cleaning valet service in the city and he wanted to do advertising. So I went in to meet with him and he said, do you mind if my wife sits in? She's, in, you know, she is in media. So I said, sure, not a problem. And I did my pitch. And then Michelle's like, have you ever thought of working at a magazine? I'm like, I could never work at Cosmo. And she said, oh no, there's this whole world of healthcare advertising and media. And, you know, a couple of months later, I ended up joining uh, Michelle and working there with her. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's great. And then how long were you on the sales side before you went over into... I would say maybe like a year and a half. I, I just, I really liked working with the product managers. Um, the, the media folks didn't always like that, but <laughs> I really did like working with them. Um, and I liked the little projects of it. Um, and even though it was very different, um, at the, also the publication I was on was struggling a little bit. Um, and I would call on Perry Colber and he worked with Maureen Riker and, you know, Perry was like, I think she would be good. They needed a media person. And he's like, I think we, we should look at her. And I met with Maureen and they hired me and it was a very little learning curve, fortunately, because I'd been selling and the rest is history. Now Maureen's in sales. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, I do see a lot of start in media, go to sales. You're yeah pretty unique in the having it the other way around. But I think to conversations we've had offline uh, for both what we currently do, having the experience, I had started in media, now I'm in sales, you vice versa, really kind of helps the process of yes. knowing what's going on on, you know, with the, the people that you're talking to. Yes. I think uh, you can be very empathetic for the other person. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's 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 good to have have that experience. So, shifting gears uh, from your career, and you know, I usually don't catch a lot of this on LinkedIn profiles, but I do I do get a little stalkery on them and try to look for interesting nuggets. Uh, so one of on mine, I I don't follow many people, but one of the 
one thing that I follow, and it's only because I saw it on, he was talking about it on his show, was Conan O'Brien. I follow him because he's like, he's like, I want a big social media presence. He's like, I don't know what the hell LinkedIn is, but I know it has something to do with business. I want to be, you know, one of the top influencers in it. Um, so I see on yours that one of the areas that you're interested in is actually Adam Carolla, who's a comedian. Are you, I'm a big fan of his as well. His podcasts are awesome. Um, are you a big fan of comedy in general? I would say I love to laugh. My quote in my senior, for my yearbook of high school was laugh to forget, but don't forget to laugh. I just love laughing. I think it's the great, it's so healthy. It's such a good release. Um, and Adam Carolla makes me laugh. So I wouldn't say like I, I go to comedy shows, but every time I've gone to a comedy show, I've laughed and I've enjoyed it. So, but there aren't like people I follow and have to go and see, but I do, I do love to laugh. So I would have to say I love comedy and I just love Adam Carolla's like take on life. Yep. He's like a bit of a curmudgeon, but yep. I, I kind of like it. And he just is like, it's his way. And yep. he's built a life where it can be his way. And it's kind of like House, that show, The Doctor. I like, yeah. I would love to be that good at something where I could just be however I want to be. Yeah. Um, so I kind of give them a lot of credit for that kind of character. Um, I love, um, I did for, love Adam so much. He actually is on tour <laughs> the year of my 50th birthday. So that's what I did for my 50th birthday was to go see an Adam Carolla show. Nice. Yeah. How, how is he at stand up? He's great. Great. And you would be so surprised by his audience. It's like 50 50. If really? Male, female. And you would, it could potentially be heavier weighted female. Wow. Yeah. That's funny because, I mean, one of the things that made him most famous was the man show. Yeah. 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 I also like, um, he does another podcast podcast with dr drew pinsky oh which yeah he did love line with love lines, um, yeah. so he does like a half an hour it's i'd say four days a week they do a podcast together um so he has some good podcasts other than the adam carolla show he has other ones so i kind of listen to the other ones too because i'm a little obsessed with them i don't know why you know He's I, hysterical i yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan he did one of my favorite comedians is this guy, Norm McDonald, who used to be on Saturday Night Live. Him and Corolla are very similar. And they, they, they yeah. did an episode where Norm McDonald was on. And of, of all the things, they were talking about uh, the lyrics to Kenny Rogers songs. And it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. They were just like breaking down the lyrics. And I was just dying the whole time. So On a big, um, with Dr. Troop, Drew Pinsky, he's on a big um, love boat. They watch all old episodes of the love boat. Nice, And nice. they critique them. It's really very funny. Nice, nice. So they, have they gotten into the Ted McGinley episodes? He's, he's known oh, as a, yeah. a, a series killer. I don't know why. He was great on He's still on the earlier, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Well, it's, it's why I, I know that you uh, like to laugh. I remember on, uh, I remember I was looking specifically at you on our last Nexus committee Zoom call as my nine-year-old daughter walked in and was just standing here and you're just cracking up in the corner and I'm like, I know she's looking at me. Yes, yeah. I was. I love it. I think especially in this age of COVID, we all have that, like I've had so many times and I try, I close the door to the office today so I don't have a cat walking across the screen nice. or dogs barking like crazy so uh, it, I think we're all in the same boat and I just find like real life yeah. so refreshing yeah yeah I, I feel the same way and I you know trust me my door was closed it wasn't locked it was closed they see me sitting here talking to a computer screen like a crazy person doesn't matter they're still going to come in and see what's going on and uh they like they like to be seen as well so uh i'm glad i'm glad my 
uh, situation can provide a little comedic relief. Speaking of pets, here's my here's my buddy. This is this is Millie. She is was this a Yorkshire Terrier. It's a Yorkshire or... Terrier. Yeah, yeah, Aww. yeah. She she's just so she just got up from sleeping in the sun to walk over to her little bed. So right on cue, I thought I'd pick her up. All right. Oh, we were part Yorkie. Uh, we think she's part Yorkie, and she she shakes like that too. Yeah. And she yep. loves the sun. We say she's part cat because she'll lay in the sun all day long. She'll yep. go in the the windowsill and hang out. So I've actually kind of said to myself, I've seen her go lay in the sun, and I say, well, I want to see what all the the hubbub's about. So I'll now lay in the sun like a dog. And it is, it does feel nice. So it does. They're onto something. It that it's the vitamin D. It is. It is. Yep. So listen, I can sit here and BS about stuff all day. Uh, obviously, we want to be respectful of your time and keep it relatively short. But last thing, uh, is there anything else that uh, our viewers should know about what's going on with Lisa Healy? Just if. Um... You ever want to come to Texas? I'm outside of Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, about a 30 minute drive from the airport. So if you want to visit and experience some Texas, come on down. I, nice. I'm getting to learn. The more people that visit, the more things I can do. That's awesome. You're not going to become a Cowboys fan, are you? I probably not um, <laughs> because they've also had their, that, um, show behind the scenes they already did dallas cowboys before i was here uh -huh. um so yeah probably not and plus they were re they're not very good that's true that's true as they're an eagles fan as but it, there as are serious fans here like oh, yeah. the pink store has dallas cowboy paraphernalia like er dick's sporting goods you know how like in new york it's the giants the jets the mets yep. like here it was like a wall of Dallas Cowboys stuff when I walked wow. in the other day. Yeah, it's like nice. crazy. You never think about it until you go somewhere else. Right, right, right. Yeah, now that's, uh, I don't know if I could live in the Dallas area just as a 41 year hater of the Dallas Cowboys. I think uh, it would be hard for me to do that, but. You know, in the East Coast, you have other rivalry things, you know, because there are some Patriots fans in the New York area. So there yeah. are like things like that. Very true. Very true. I had a good buddy of mine from Boston lived in New York for years and he managed to survive. So, um, well, this was great. It was great catching up. Thank you for all the insights on the Nexus Awards. I think uh, everybody should be very excited about that. I know we everybody tried as hard as humanly possible to make that a live event. And it just got to the point where that was, you know, you didn't want to be pushing and pushing and pushing. So I'm glad we have a date. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Yep. And, you know, live events are hopefully not too far off in the future. So not too will get... far off. I agree. Yep. We are going to get to the other side of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, this has been great. And thank you so much for joining us and for, all, for letting us know a little bit about Lisa Healy. Thanks for picking me. Oh, I really appreciate it. Anytime. I, I, you're another highly influential person in our industry and uh, it was a no-brainer. Thank you. You have you're a great welcome. rest of the day. You too. Okay, that's our episode. Until next time, be good. See you soon. Peace.